flyover country. That's what people on the east and west coast call the states in the Midwest to disparage them. They'll acknowledge Chicago as a city, but the rest of the region gets ignored even though there are several other cities in this part of the country. They assume that all Midwestern states are the same and they lump them together. I mean, I get it, there are large tracts of land devoted to farming and agriculture, so to an outsider they might look similar, but the Midwestern states all have characteristics to differentiate them from each other. In this video, we're taking a look at my home state of Illinois and its neighbor to the northwest, Iowa. Illinois has a population of 12,671,821, with approximately three quarters of those residents living in the northernmost third of the state in the Chicago metro and surrounding areas. In addition to Chicago, Illinois has seven other cities with a population over 100,000. They are Aurora, Naperville, Joliet, Rockford, Springfield, Peoria, Elgin, and Waukegan. The rest of the state is mostly rural, with the occasional college city sprinkled in for fun. Iowa, on the other hand, only has a population of 3,155,070 in the entire state. Their largest city is Des Moines, which is the state capital. Iowa is considered a rural state, but in actuality, 61% of the population live in an urban setting. The Metropolitan Statistical Area for Des Moines has a population of 655,409. Iowa only has two other cities with a population over 100,000, Cedar Rapids and Davenport. So Iowa has a fraction of the population that Illinois does, but the two states have basically the same structure with most of the people living in the cities. However, the demographic makeup of the two states is considerably different. Iowa is 85.4% white, 3.6% black, 2.52% Asian, and 6.07% Hispanic. Illinois has a little bit more diversity. The population is 60.9% white, 13.8% black, 5.59% Asian, and 17.3% Hispanic. There are a few reasons for that diversity. One reason is that during the Great Migration of the 1900s, where 6 million black people left the southern states to escape Jim Crow laws and discrimination, many of them ended up in Chicago. One of the reasons for the Asian population being higher is that the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign has certain academic programs that attract students from Asian countries, primarily mainland China. In fact, one of the founders of YouTube came from Taiwan to attend the U of I. In Illinois, 23.5% of the households speak a language besides English. The most common languages are Spanish, Polish, and Chinese languages, including Mandarin, Cantonese, and regional dialects. Foreign-born residents make up 14.1% of the population, with the three top countries of origin being Mexico, India, and Poland. In Iowa, 8.83% of the households speak a language besides English. The most common languages are Spanish, Arabic, and the various Chinese languages. 5.13% of the residents are foreign-born, with most of them coming from Mexico, India, and Vietnam. Homeownership in Illinois is at 66%, but in Iowa, it's 71.3%. This is probably due to affordability. The average home price in the Prairie State is $203,400, and the property tax rate is the second highest in the country. The Hawkeye State, on the other hand, has a tax rate that is the 11th lowest, and the average home price is considerably lower at $152,000. In both states, women tend to be better educated than the men. Illinois sees 124,092 women, and 92,173 men earn a bachelor's degree every year. Iowa has 39,344 women, and 28,522 men earn a degree. The most common bachelor's degree issued in most states is in registered nursing. In Illinois, it makes up 13.9% of the degrees awarded. In Iowa, it accounts for 6.12% of the degrees. This is a partial explanation for why more women are awarded degrees than men. Nursing is still very much a female-dominated field. The largest university in Illinois is the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. They have 13,181 graduate every year. Iowa's largest university is the Kaplan University Davenport campus. They have an annual graduation of 9,624. When it comes to college, something that is a concern for most people is affordability, so tuition costs are a factor, and there is a huge difference between in-state and out-of-state costs. Illinois' average in-state tuition of $9,170 is higher than Iowa's average of $7,456. However, Iowa's out-of-state tuition is considerably higher at $21,292 than Illinois' price tag of $16,267. The federal minimum wage is currently $7.25. Each state has the ability to either run with that or increase the amount. 
Iowa chooses to just stick with that amount, which keeps the median household income for the state at only $59,955. The average male earns $61,560, while females average $45,872. Illinois, on the other hand, has a minimum wage of $11 as of January 1st, 2021. The median household income in the land of Lincoln is $65,030, with men averaging $74,413 and women averaging $55,889. Even though Iowa's average income and minimum wage are lower than Illinois', they have a lower poverty rate. 11.7% of Iowans live below the poverty line, compared to 13.1% of Illinoisans. Young women are impacted by poverty the most in both states, but for two different age groups. In Iowa, it's women between the ages of 18 and 24, and in Illinois, it's women between the ages of 25 and 34. The highest paying job in both states is that of physician or surgeon, and the most common job title in both states is truck driver. The most common industry is different for the two states. In Illinois, it's restaurants and other food services, which might help explain the higher poverty rate. In Iowa, the most common industry is elementary and secondary schools. The two states also have specialized jobs that may not be that common elsewhere. Illinois has quite a few people with job titles of railroad conductor or yard master because Chicago is a busy railway hub. Iowa, on the other hand, has many people working as control and valve installers and repairers, whatever that means. Jobs in Iowa seem to be closer to people as well. The average commute time in Iowa is only 18.5 minutes, compared to the 27.9 minutes that Illinoisans spend commuting every day. Both Illinois and Iowa have healthcare spending that averages around $8,200 per person annually. Illinois has more physicians and dentists per capita though. For every one primary care provider, there's a patient base of 1,240. For every dentist, there are 1,332 patients. And for every mental health provider, there are 526 patients. In Iowa, the ratio of patients to primary care providers is 1,363 to 1. Dentists have an average patient count of 1,561, and mental health providers care for 756 patients. Iowa, though, has a higher percentage of residents covered by health insurance. 53.9% are covered through an employer-based plan, 12.4% are covered by Medicare, and 14.3% are covered by Medicaid. Only 4.71% are uninsured, which is less than half that of the national rate. Illinois has 52.3% of its population covered through employer plans, 11.7% through Medicare, and 17.7% through Medicaid. The uninsured population accounts for 6.81%, which is higher than Iowa's rate, but it's still considerably lower than the national rate, which hovers around 9%. Since both states are located in the Midwest, I imagine most people outside of the region think the weather is probably the same in both places, so let's take a look. Iowa has what is classified as a humid continental climate. That means that they tend to have cold snowy winters and hot humid summers. They average 26 snow days a year, and the average temperature in January is 30 degrees. In July, the average temperature climbs to 86 degrees, and they experience thunderstorms 50 days out of the year. Illinois' geographic area is longer than wide, so there are actually two different climates in the state. The upper half of the state is classified as humid continental, just like Iowa, but the southern half has a humid subtropical climate. So that means that for some sections of Illinois, the weather is completely different than Iowa, but for some other areas, it's pretty similar. I took the average for both regions of the state to find the overall numbers for Illinois as a whole. Illinois gets snow an average of 18 days each year, and the average temperature in January is 33. The average temperature in July is 86, just like in Iowa, and the number of thunderstorms each year is the same as well. Despite both states being part of Tornado Alley, there is a discrepancy concerning the frequency of tornadoes in each place. Illinois has an average of 35 tornadoes every year, but Iowa has an annual average of 47. So Illinois and Iowa do have some similarities, but there are really more differences between the two states. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't mind, would you leave a comment below letting me know if you'd like to see more content like this? My channel is still fairly new, so I'm trying to figure out what you, the viewers, would like to see. And if you like having Iowa covered, I can add some additional videos later. And if you'd like to help the channel grow, consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I remain stuck in the current field.